My name is Gina Gardner. I'm an international best-selling author. I'm a motivational speaker, empowerment relationship coach, and business strategic business development coach. I wonder, have you ever had those times when everything feels like an effort? When you get incredibly frustrated because things don't seem to be moving either in the direction you want or moving quickly enough? Well, I'm a pretty upbeat person. But I too have those times when, you know, everything just feels heavy and clunky and, and a real challenge. And so what I wanted to do today was to share with you um, how I manage those times. And hopefully that you'll let me know what are your clunky times? What are the things that the times that make you feel that everything seems just overwhelming or just too darn hard? Times when you'd rather put your feet up with a, a cup of coffee or a gin and tonic rather than get on and do the jobs that you know that you need to do. I've been working very hard over the last couple of years writing my latest book, getting the uh, Thrive Together Tribe membership program all sorted out. And I'm somebody who normally has huge amounts of enthusiasm and drive. But this last two weeks, particularly, I don't know why, have felt like pushing a very, very large lorry uphill with no engine on my own. And yet I know that I need to keep the momentum up because for me, there is a real sense of purpose. And that's to um, positively impact on a million people in the next five years. And if I'm going to do that, then I need to crack on. There is no. Um, sitting about doing nothing. Now I need to make a distinction between driving oneself to the point of, of exhaustion and looking after yourself. But I'm talking about those days when for no apparent reason, things just seem very sticky, that it feels as if you're walking through treacle. One of the ways that I deal with that is that I give myself a structure to the day, that I allow myself to have um, a break, to go out, for me going out into the garden and doing a bit of deadheading or cutting a few things down. Hi Anne, lovely to see you there, thanks for joining me. Um, I'll go and spend a little bit of time in the garden um, and I find that that energises me so that I can get going again. Another thing that works for me is to give myself just a few minutes to do a mindfulness exercise, to sit eyes closed and just to take in what the senses actually um, can hear, can feel, can smell, taste and finally see. And even five minutes just taking yourself outside the, the drive, the dross of what's got to go, got to be done can be really, really helpful. But I think the big thing for me is if you understand what your why is, if you know why these things are being done and if they are important to you. It's all very well if you've got a whole list of things to do, if they happen to be important to other people, but you can't see why am I doing this, then the motivation and the enthusiasm wears somewhat thin. But if you have a really strong sense of purpose, a strong feeling that there is a really um, important reason for doing things, then life takes on a very different feel to it. You can hear Leo in the background. Leo is my cat who is absolutely convinced that I am his slave. So bear with me. I will show you Leo and I'll also let him out because he's making a noise. So there is Leo. I don't know if you can see him. There he is, Leo. Can you say hello? And I'll just let him out and then I'll carry on. Leah has no such problems. He just um, works on the principle that, um, that you will do his bidding at any time as long as he makes enough noise about it. For many of us, when we get into overwhelm, when there seems to be too much to do, we become impotent, we procrastinate, we find that in, despite the fact that there is an enormous amount to do, and indeed because of it, that what we do is we stay stuck. 
And if that's the situation, then I would really urge you to break it down into little bits. Break it down into even five minute bursts of activity. Because in the getting going, you break the logjam. I'm reminded of a client who came to me because she was in total overwhelm. Um, her work was suffering and she had a, a responsible job and she um, looked after a whole team. Um, but at home life, she was finding it overwhelming too. And she described that her kitchen was full of washing up and the dishwasher was still full of a, a clean load. The sink and the draining board and the table were full of dirty pots. That all around the house there was clutter because it was as much as she could do to get up in the morning. And so what we did is we created a plan where um, we divided each room into 10 minute bites of activity. And that what she was going to do if within any given period is that she was going to make sure that whatever she did, she did 10 minutes activity. And then she was going to text me to let me know that she'd achieved it. So on day one, she was supposed to get up. She'd chosen what time she was going to get up, but she didn't. She got up much later. But she did manage to do job one. And job one was to empty the dishwasher and to refill it and put the dishwasher on. And in day one, that's actually all she achieved. Day two, by this time, the kitchen had less clutter. She was able to not only do the first 10 minutes, which was to unload the dishwasher, put more in, um, but she was then able, because there was even more space, to carry on do the next 10 minutes and then the next. And within a very short time, she was back on track. Now, it may sound really trite, but actually it works. When things, there's so much to do, in the end, you can't see the wood for the trees. I saw a client yesterday, and it's an old client who'd come back. I've not seen her for a good two years. And there's a lot going on at work, and there's a lot going on in her home life. And she came because she said, I'm finding it all very difficult. I can't work out where to start. And so what we looked at was where were the priorities? Where were the things that were going to make the biggest difference? And we talked about kissing the frog, and I'm sure those of you that have listened to me speak before will know that kissing the frog is doing the most difficult thing first, getting it out of the way, and that gives you huge impetus to move on. And so when she left, she left with uh, 10 jobs to do, and each of those jobs with a time frame that it was going to, to, um, to take. And again, I asked her to be accountable and to text me um, twice during the day, at lunchtime and at the end of the day. Well, I was amazed when I got up in the morning, there was a text from her already um, that she'd been up at six and that she'd knocked three of the 10 jobs off her list already. By lunchtime, she'd done some more. And so once again, the log jam, that, that sense of, of being stuck was completely removed. And so for her, we revisited why were these things important and what priority was she going to give them and which um, of those things was going to give her the most impact for her time in terms of moving her forward. So I'd love to know the things that keep you stuck. How is it you motivate yourself when you are finding things difficult? For me, it's knowing my why. I want to make a positive difference. I want to help empower people to empower myself at the same time, to maintain that sense of empowerment. And so despite the feeling that this week has been walking through treacle, I've achieved a significant amount. I've also practiced some self-care. I've had some time in the garden. And of course, I've been Leo's slave. So I'd love to know what you think. If you want to know more about my mission, which is to impact positively on a, thousand, um, a million people within the next five years, you can find a, a, much of what I'm up to on the website, which is www.genuinely-u.com. You'll also find a, a, a link to a free digital download of my latest book, 
Thriving Not Surviving, The Five Secret Pathways of Happiness, Success and Fulfillment, and you'll find a link to the new app, Genuinely You. It'd be great if you could go onto the Apple Store and download the app, and if you like it, I'd love a five star from you so we can start to get up the rankings. If you're interested in being or longing to a community that can help motivate you and help you stay on track, then come and explore the Thrive Together Tribe. Thanks so much for being with me today, and I look forward to seeing you again. Take care now. Bye.